I know the struggle of raising a child um, on the spectrum. And um, I'm sorry for crying, but it's just I'm very passionate about this because as Pacifica, um, no, there's just a lot of barriers and there's a lot of bridges that we need to cross over because the most important thing is that not only just as parents and caregivers, but we have to be content and we need to be happy. And how can we do that if we do not know how to reach out for the resources that we need? And I think social work is the perfect role for that you know we need the middleman to speak for the families and also reach out to organizations that would hear our families' voices because our children are important this podcast is proudly supported by the Ortara Network Action Committee ONAC community owned community driven and community led no my hearty my Hoki mai anō ki, we are Ōtara, that is your voice from Ōtara going to the world, and that's all thanks to the amazing ONAC, the Ōtara Network um, organisation. My name's Judy Spate, and I'm here with the most amazing group of <laughs> wahine tō that um, we've had around here for a while. I'm Not that every woman that walks through the door is just incredible, but these guys have come to us as social workers in their first year at MIT studying at, um, social work but also getting from the couple of weeks with us a bit of an idea we hope about what community's like so this is the community experience what I've asked the ladies to do this morning is just take us through a few sort of general conversation pieces about you know why they've come to be involved in, in social work um, what they're hoping to achieve, what sort of experiences they had while they were here at, at We Ōtara, um, and possibly that whole where that's going to set them up to go for the future. So before we go there, we're going to say, ladies, please, can we ask you to introduce yourselves? I am Cook Island Descent, and I am born and raised in Mangere East. Woohoo! Hi, I'm Sakia, um, I'm Tangan, and I'm from East Auckland, Pamir. Uh, yeah, Malo Lele. My name is Susan Paleafa. I come from Kalmotua Tongatapu, and I was born in Aotearoa, but raised in the U.S. And yeah. Hi, I'm Agnes. I am Samoan, and I was brought up in Maiden. That is lovely, ladies. Thank you so much. And, and it's good to get a bit of a background. It's <coughs> sad that Ortara, Ortara's greatest haven't managed to fling someone into your midst, but you know. We know that you've all come to know and love Ōtara a little bit more yeah. after a couple of weeks here. One of the things that I was thinking could be a good way to start would be to talk to um, our audience here about the reason why you've chosen social work as your, you know, your great love, as the reason why you're going to, um, or your professional qualification. And, I mean, the thing is that... that no, no one's 15 or 16, so it's important to maybe even wonder what, what you've done until now. So maybe if we start, Agnes, with you now, could you talk to us a little bit about why why you've chosen social work? Um, <coughs> for me, I chose social workers because of my past experiences. And um, growing up as an islander, like we have a lot that we need to change and support that we need within our families. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, yeah, so I'm just like Agnes, there's multitudes of reasons why I want to do social work and a lot of it has to do with my upbringing. Growing up in poverty, low income household, um, growing up in a neighborhood where there is a lot of crime, mm. violence and just um, coming from a neighborhood that lacked a lot of resources for us youth to thrive and, you know, make something out of ourselves. And, um, but my main reason for social work <coughs> is because I am a proud autism mom. I have a beautiful eight-year-old boy who has, um, who is on the spectrum, he's autistic and he's nonverbal. 
And um, just a little brief little backstory of why I chose social work as a career is because um, last year I went to a workshop for Tilting the Seesaw. And um, a lot of parents came with the teachers and the whole team that work with the autistic children. And I, from my observation, I'll, um, us Pasifika parents and Maori parents came to the ta came to this workshop with not as much resources as the Pakiha parents that were there, where their kids were thriving because they had a lot of tools, resources and a lot of help because they can articulate and reach out for for help. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that with us Pacifica Islanders and Maori parents of disabled children, because there's a barriers, it could be from language or just not understanding the system that our children can access so many resources and tools, it made me sit back and reflect on what can I do to change to make sure that my people can also have their children thrive. Mm. Uh, just like the Pakihas. <clears throat> you know, I'm not trying to get a race thing, but, you know, they're on game with how to access more things in, than people like me. So I went home, I did my research, and I found out that social work is what would make me be able to, you know, um, have a good career but also be able to help families like me because it's a struggle to get, um, you know, just the resources and the tools for our children because it's a challenge and not everybody is um, able to, to reach those resources due to, it could be something like they're ashamed or they're embarrassed or they lack of. And if I have, you know, someone like me who can be the voice and advocate for families and the caregivers who have children with disabilities, then um, that will be fulfilling for me. It's rewarding for me because I know the struggle of raising a child um, on the spectrum. And um, I'm sorry for crying, but it's just, I'm very passionate about this because as Pacifica, um, you know, there's just a lot of barriers and there's a lot of bridges that we need to cross over because the most important thing is that not only just us parents and caregivers, but we have to be content and we need to be happy. And how can we do that if we do not know how to reach out for the resources that we need? And I think social work is the perfect role for that you know we need the middleman to speak for the families and also reach out to organizations that would hear our families voices mm -hmm. because our children mm -hmm. are important um they are the re they are the, our future and i believe social work is is a beautiful thing to help people who don't have who just there's so many barriers, you know, especially within our community of Baspika and and Maori families. So, I that's why I want to choose social work. I want to be the voice. I want to empower people. Mm -hmm. I want to give people the hope that life is tough, but life is is beautiful outside of just what you know because you grew up in poverty and just chaos. You know, there life is beautiful, and I believe that. All of us, we this is our goal is that we want to encourage people and let them know that life will be life is good, yeah. and that we can help you, you know, provide the tools and resources so that you can find your strengths and turn it into skills so that way you'll be able to, you know, live a good life and be content and joyful with your family. and. Yeah, so that's what I'm sorry. That's why I chose social yeah, that's work. It's really special. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like thinking it, and what's so valuable about what you just said is that you're taking your own personal experience, yes. you know, and then saying, well, how can I take those tools that I can gather, yes, um, and share those more broadly? And that's, I guess, exactly what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. Having a bit of a chat downstairs makes me so cross when there are people in those situations and. And they've kind of lost their you or lost yes. their why on the yes. way through. 
they're not there. This is not just any old job. You guys are, you know, the keys to yeah, the future. Yeah. Uh, and, and the keys to equity is the other thing too. That's yes. the equity thing that's coming through. It's amazing. We're yeah. so lucky to have people like you guys. We <laughs> <laughs> really are. As a community, because we'll ensure that all your placements are in... Um, all of placements <laughs> in all <Tara. laughs> Okay, Sakia, tell us, what's your why? Um, I think it's because of my upbringing and everyone in my life. Um, for me, it literally took a village to raise me. And um, growing up, I would hear like different stories and experiences of the people that's in my life, you know, and how they never received the help they actually needed. Mm. And mm. it wasn't until one day I was like, this, I wish I could do more for you. Like, what, how can I do that for you? So I guess that's when I started thinking about social work. I'm like, I want to be this person that'll make changes in your life and the person that'll actually be able to help you and give you the help that you want and need. Mm. And yeah, that's what got me into social work because I just want to give back to everyone around me and did you have any amazing social work models around you know social worker models with no. your people that you knew no no, no. so you still so I want to be that you know you have this big thing in your yeah, heart like, like, like oh, I can help you like, <laughs> maybe it's that much oh that was what I was trying to do with that lady of yeah. course was, so you can see someone because it's all about going as far as you need to go yes. isn't it yeah yeah pretty much how many? Well, for me, like our other ladies, um, it was also for personal reasonings, like growing up, um, seeing my friends or people that I knew had less than me. And yeah, I don't know, I think just personal reasons behind it, I wanted to grow up and give back to my community, give back to the kids, give back to, you know, the people that needed it, mm. if that makes sense. So you had... You didn't grow it up in quite such a difficult scenario? Um, no, I didn't. I was yeah. between um, two homes, which was my mum's house and my um, father's house. Mm. So, yeah, I was between those two homes. Um, my father didn't have as much as my mum did, but, yeah. Personal reasons. Mm. Um, we don't speak anymore, me and my father, because mm. he's not a very good man. But, yeah. <laughs> that gives you a, a, another dynamic, I guess, to, to add yeah. to the, the window. I think the, it's, yeah. it was just the people that were around me that I chose to surround myself with. Mm. I saw that they had less than me and they were struggling in their own way. So I wanted to help them and help the kids that need it, you know, focus mm. more on our kids and help the community out. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it's, yeah. Maybe we should have started the, started the last two weeks with a conversation. <laughs> um, it's quite, uh, and that's what I love about podcasting is that opportunity to have these amazing conversations with people. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, because it is about giving a piece of yourself, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start this time with Sakia asking about what were the things that you... So it's a two-sided question... What are the things that you really loved about being here? What the things, the gifts, mm-hmm. and what were the challenges about being part of our life at um, Accelerating Aotearoa and Auto? Um, what I really loved about being here is this place actually gives back to the community and, um, you know, their hearts, the kind of hearts that you people have. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and I didn't, didn't ex experienced that many challenges here like mm. it was just mm. it just felt like home in here like yep. loved it loved being here we've loved it in you <laughs> okay who's next Summer. um yeah i just uh i loved it here um you're amazing and i think your team is like really amazing you guys embraced us always welcoming um i also see the magic that happens as well like Mm. just seeing people come in and they leave with with smiles on their faces and their kids are happy and everything that you guys provide for especially the community is 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 really amazing to me and i love that you guys are also about the environment as well not just about like the people in the community but you guys um collaborate with so many organizations to make Otara a better place and um 
you know, I see your vision and it's, it's so beautiful and it's inspiring. And I do hope that whoever comes in that I, I believe people that come in, they leave knowing that what you do for them, it doesn't go unnoticed and that you are a hard worker and your team. Just wonderful people here. You guys are always welcoming. And um, I also want to acknowledge the the beauty in having like youth come in and they have somewhere safe to be mm. not only is it a safe space but there's there's pie there's food <clears throat> and whatever they need they take they don't have to feel like ma like and you know embarrassed or ashamed mm. and yeah it's a beautiful thing what you guys do here is is truly amazing mm. and i don't think you get I don't think Accelerating Auckland gets enough recognition for what you guys do for the community. Mm. You know, from ages young to to the older heads, it's like you accommodate everybody and nobody gets turned away. And um, yeah, because it's my first experience seeing something like this, yeah. especially com uh, community work. And what you do is, um, yeah, it inspires me. And I admire what you and your team do, what you guys put together and taking care of everybody it is such a beautiful thing like the other day like i said it's like magic you see the magic happen if you stand back and watch everybody it's, it's so beautiful and yeah that's what i love about accelerating auckland because yeah we're students as well but we weren't treated any different mm -hmm. we were you know um asked to go home with parcels do you guys want coffee you know like you made us feel, like Sakya said, like we're at home mm -hmm. and we don't feel like we're left out or anything. Um, yeah, so I appreciate you for everything. And the challenges, I didn't find any challenges because I really think that what you have here is like, everything's just on point, if that makes sense. Like you just, <coughs> nobody, no, there's nothing doing. weird or, you know, just, yeah. There's no challenges. I didn't see it. Yeah, there's no challenges um, since we've been here. It's just been nothing but great. Warm, embracing, very welcoming. Yeah, just amazing. I can go on and on, but yeah, I, I admire everything you do in this at this organization. And it's, yeah, this infrastructure is amazing. And you really are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> just to let you really are. You and your team, you guys are beautiful yeah beautiful people. you guys are what you guys do for the community especially old Tara is like i don't have the words to describe it but you are amazing and i hope you know that yeah well that doesn't anyway <laughs> that's really helpful for us too yeah. um yeah amazingly helpful thank you <laughs> i really um yeah i mean i, I love the magic too and right. that magic is something it's really special right. and and I guess we all work so hard that we don't have time to go and tell other people what we are yeah. but that doesn't really matter right. as long as people know it it's a safe place yeah, a safe yeah. place. yes thank um, <coughs> coming here made me realise that um, I need to be grateful for what I have because what I have other people don't have and then like coming here see the youth work mm. together to support the community it was really good mm. and um it made me proud as an islander to see our people coming together mm. supporting one another and the support they use have for us mm. and um the community is really on point <laughs> yeah 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 it's beautiful so you last asked on that question haven't you? again mm -hmm. um no i think you are all amazing people your hearts you can see it through your work that you are really mm -hmm. like um wanting to help people and you want mm -hmm. our communities and you know the people that lack what they actually have you tend to their needs you know mm -hmm. so making those food parcels on the first day i was like oh my goodness this is amazing like you mm -hmm. telling us what you have done and all your accomplishments, I was so like yep. flabbergasted. I was mm -hmm. like, wow, people actually give back to the communities. You know, I've heard the big organizations, they don't really help. Mm -hmm. um, only on the news I've seen it, but 
Yeah, like smaller organizations like Accelerating Aotearoa use actually give back to your community. I've I've already told my family about you and they've so they're well, make so sure shocked. they swing by. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was telling them I was like, oh my gosh, my placement is so amazing. Mm. Their team, Judy, everyone there is so amazing because you actually help. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You actually help and you you give them food. You give them what they need to actually thrive in life. So, mm. Yeah, these are really beautiful people. Yeah. Mm. Well, what a lucky girl. <laughs> I play mum and put this on repeat. Anytime I feel a bit down, then we'll just sit out there and we'll, we'll, yeah. play, the, we'll play this this conversation through a million times. Um, so, the things then um, about what you feel your takeaways are, what are the things you might take forward into your practice that you've seen happening here? I'm going to let you guys just answer as you wish rather than going around now. So jump in. I guess if there's anything I'll take from here is to love, you know, Mm -hmm. just love because you don't know and you just never know. Yeah. Mm. And to not lose um, the spark or your why, like you said before, Mm. to not lose it because there's people that still need help. Every day they still need help. So... And that's what you have shown me, that you still help every day. You get up and you tend to your community. Yeah. So, yeah. It's my why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is? Um, what I would take from here is to embrace everybody. Um acknowledging people because that's another thing I see here is always acknowledging everybody mm-hmm. like sometimes you can go somewhere and nobody says hi or oh would you like a cup of coffee but with you guys um, always acknowledging people and just engaging there you go very engaging I need to work on that and that's what I'm taking from this is engaging with people making them feel safe and comfortable mm-hmm. so for them to open up to me as well especially since I want to be a social worker I need to learn how to engage with people better and make them feel safe enough so I could build relationships and collaborate with people because that's what you do you know collaborating with people you can't just barge in you have to ease your way in so that's what I'll be taking away from being here is working better on my engaging with people yep for me is to give hope to people um, because I see you you're like always positive never negative and um, that's what I do you know to give hope be able to give hope to them that even though life is hard that there's always a way to live life yeah it's lovely too that just yeah this is really humbling um most of all to see that you guys are yeah you can see what we're trying to do mm, yeah. isn't it amazing isn't it? yeah not that we have a checklist <laughs> we just I guess we just do what we think needs to happen mm. but to see that it this is how it looks yeah yeah so if we maybe move to a um, just a bit of a wind up now thinking about you know if we look at this is you know it's, it's a basket we've all put our things into the basket and you've I guess shared your souls a little bit in the <laughs> last few minutes um, <laughs> which is I guess the other thing isn't it but, but when you look inside your basket what are the things you're going to keep on top to remind you about um, what that why was that, that will drive you and take you through because you know you've got some pretty rough years ahead um, in terms mm-hmm. of in terms of staying true to your purpose but also you know study's not that easy eh? yeah um, yeah and and especially if you're trying to work at the same time and you know you've got all, all the worries of the world 
as well as trying to get through your study, as well as remember why you're here in the first instance. So is there something in your basket that you can look at that will be that, that thing that helps you drive forward? Where should we start? I think um, for me it's to always give. That's, yeah, my main one is to always give back to for people that need it, um, the things I don't need, I can bring it here. Like, it's just to always mm. give, yeah. <clears throat> that's, I think that's my main reason of taking away from this place, and that's in my basket. Is, yeah. yeah. The to gifts, give. the gifts to receive and the gifts to give. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, without thinking about receiving <laughs> something back. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just to give back. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. to give back. Yeah. 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 But if you don't receive as well as giving, then we break the chain. Mm. Right. And you think, even if you think about it, you know, you're closed. Yeah. Um, like, I've already yeah. got a new wardrobe. Yeah, I know. It's from this place. Oh, never buy any more clothes again. <laughs> right. Like, so instead the of letters. taking it to the thrift <laughs> store, you can just bring it in. It's, you yeah. know, for free. Because thrift yeah. stores are getting, like, expensive now. True. Yeah. And yeah. people will go there when they need clothes, but they can just come here because it's yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amazing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Super. I, yeah. And especially there are more and more and more people giving us yeah, things yeah. to give away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. And people think too. that, you know, we're doing them a favour. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speaking of which, there's a rolling pin that I put out there last night that somebody might like to grab because we had two. Okay, who's next? What's in your basket? <coughs> um, to willingly serve. Mm. And expect nothing in return. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 Cameras on you, Amos. To for me will be um, yeah, to give. Like sometimes you're holding on to something you don't really need, and then that thing that you're holding on to can take you back to what you need to move on from. Yeah, so mm. I think giving is something that we need to. Give to your community. Yeah. Whether it's love or yes. Yeah. Or a pair of jeans or some shoes. <laughs> <or. laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Um. In my basket, it will always be my son. He is my why. He's. He is my why. I'm in social work. He's the reason that I will walk that stage and be a social worker. Um, yeah, that's just, he's my why. He's the reason why I better myself in my life so I can have a, a good career, help people, but at the same time um, be able to sustain a, a living for me and my son. Mm. So it's beneficial both ways. So that is my, yeah, that's my why. I want to I'll keep you um, true. Yeah. Keep me true to myself and he's a constant reminder every day of why. I'm going for my bachelor's. Yeah, so, and also spreading autism awareness. That's, I'm very big on that. Mm. My shirt says autism, where <laughs> for my son. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my why. My why is with me every day. So, I know I'm gonna pull through. I'm not gonna change along the way because he's my, he's my reason. He's my motivation. He inspires me. So, yeah. That's my baby in my basket. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well. Yeah. I'm just going to get grown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So thank you for being part of, you know, bringing yourselves here. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was. Um, but we love it. And it feel really, I mean, I, I personally feel really um, honoured to have had this conversation with you guys. But on the other side you know, just know that you can always come back here yeah. you might be a bit peckish sometime you yeah. don't even know where the secret supply of biscuits is but I'll, I'll show you <laughs> <laughs> we could ask you though um, so there's always room for you here 
Uh, mm, and, you know, whether you need help or you want to drop off some clothes or you need some food or you, you found someone that needs help in the elevator yeah. Yeah. Um, once this whare becomes your home it's forever your home mm-hmm.